It could be argued that Israel could not maintain its dominance in the Middle East without the support of foreign actors, especially the more powerful governments and corporations in the world. In this video, we'll take a more specific look at which corporations and governments send support to the Israeli ruling class and how it affects their role in the Middle East. Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. The first major form of support to the Israeli ruling class comes from the U.S. government, which provides roughly $3.8 billion every single year. The Israeli government then uses this cash to purchase weapons and technology from the U.S. war corporations. Foreign military sales are, as the government has stated, quote, a fundamental tool of U.S. foreign policy. But U.S. sales to Israel is very comprehensive, covering land, air, communications, and training. Let's look at some of these items. They include helicopters like the Boeing A864, fighter and attack aircraft like the Lockheed Martin F-35 and the F-16 fighter jets, missiles, rockets, and general munitions like the NAMO M72 shoulder-fired rockets and the Lockheed Martin Hellfire AGM-114 air-to-ground missiles, land vehicles such as the medium tactical vehicles from Oshkosh Defense or from Rolls-Royce, cargo aircraft such as the Lockheed Martin C-130, training includes pilot training at the National Test Pilot School in Mojave, California, or aircraft maintenance in Cincinnati, Ohio. Even general military equipment is provided, like communications equipment from Datalink Solutions. When events such as the October 7th conflict break out, it's important to check the rise in weapon stocks. Just a week after this conflict between Israel and Gaza began, the stocks of Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, General Dynamics, and Northrop Grumman rose nearly 7%. In addition, the deaths of innocent people in Gaza shouldn't only be blamed on the Israeli ruling class, but also the corporate overlords of the US and its politicians. Another source is from the United Kingdom, which Israel has also used weapons against the people of Gaza. The UK has consistently sold weapons to Israel since 1967. One of the UK's most notorious weapons corporations is BAE Systems, which produces components for weapons sold to Israel, such as the F-35 and the MK-38 Mod 2 machine gun, among other weapons. It's important to note that BAE Systems is among the top 30 corporations in the country. The UK has many cooperative relationships with other weapons companies who sell to Israel, including Raytheon, Leonardo, Dunlap, and others. Now, Elbit Systems is an Israeli weapons corporation which has subsidiaries in the UK as well as the US and has arms export licenses issued from the UK. Some of these include military communications components, military communications equipment, body armor and military electronic equipment, and much more. Elbit Systems also has a new research and development facility in Bristol. Although the corporation exports from the UK to Israel, much of its production in the UK is focused around contracts with the British Armed Forces. Selling weapons isn't the only way to profit from the Israel-Gaza conflict. One additional way is to know in advance that a conflict will ensue and to buy and sell shares of stock beforehand. Investors in the New York and Tel Aviv stock exchange knew in advance that Hamas militants were in the process of launching an attack on Israel before October 7th, and they used this knowledge not to warn the Israeli people, or the world for that matter, but to cash in by short-selling Israel-linked shares, which has now generated millions of dollars in profit. Short-selling is a bet by traders that a company's stock price will go down in the near future, and for a small fee 
short sellers will borrow shares of a corporation or fund that they believe will soon drop. Short selling is an investment or a strategy which speculates on a stock's decline. In this process, a position is opened by borrowing shares of a stock. Then the investor sells the borrowed shares to buyers, therefore pocketing the difference and potentially and often making huge profits. In a paper published by two professors titled Trading on Terror, they said, quote, Days before the attack on October 7th, traders appeared to anticipate the events to come. On October 2nd, short interests in the MSCI Israel Exchange Traded Fund suddenly and significantly spiked. And just before the attack, short selling of Israeli securities on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange increased dramatically. Is it really a surprise that investors, aka capitalists, are profiting from wars which ultimately harm the majority of innocent people? The bigger question here is, how could investors know that Hamas was going to attack? Is there a coordination between Hamas and outside investors? Well, we do know that Israel did nothing well, nothing in air quotations, when it was warned by an intelligence officer from Egypt that, quote, an explosion of the situation is coming, end quote. Regardless, if somebody in a high position in Israel knew or didn't before that October 7th attack, the fact remains, if Israel knew of this attack and did nothing, it knowingly allowed it to happen and then used it as a justification to begin indiscriminate bombing of Gaza. At the very least, the Israeli ruling class and state has certainly found the attack to be convenient for them and made quick use of it to launch their brutal attack against Palestinian people. This should serve as an exposure to the Israeli people that the Israeli state and its ruling class have little interest in actually protecting them and instead perceives its own people as expendable. After all, the IDF did kill its own people during this conflict. 